Sainte. Father, we thank you tonight in the name of Jesus for all of your goodness and your grace and mercy. Thank you for this opportunity to come together and uh, experiment with this video and to uh, see what's going to happen. I ask you to lead us and guide us tonight yes, Lord. Uh, in this discussion and may your will be done and people be born again, people Amen. be set free, people be healed and, and finances flow into the kingdom yes. in Jesus yes. name. Amen. And our voice is strong. <clears throat> Amen. So we're, uh, what is this? January 20th, <laughs> this January. We're here in uh, January of 2014 in our first, uh, what, what we kind of call round table, roughly speaking, even, a not table. a table and it's not even round, <laughs> but we're here. We've got Dr. Debbie Brewer over here, Dr. Gene Chesser and Dr. Daryl Chesser here. So we're just going to start and yap a little bit today. What was the scriptures today or what was the prevailing thought today? Played a, a video for you or an audio for you. Yes. Saw an audio of my husband, H.L., preaching uh, in 1990, preaching on water baptism. And uh, what I heard the first few minutes of it, it could have been played and preached today. It's so relevant to what's going on in the world today and everything. So very interesting very interesting yes i heard him say uh he was talking about uh eternity and he says don't he says eternal life is not a reward he said it is a gift mm -hmm. he said there's many people that are going to be in the eternal in heaven that will receive nothing here in this life because they have not availed themselves of it or they decided to live like the world but they got born again they receive Jesus into their heart and then they just kind of live like the world and, and wondering why stuff isn't working and stuff. And then they'll step over into the eternal and go, well, praise God, I'm here. And the scripture comes to mind, of course, he'll wipe away every tear. You'll see all the stuff that you left on the table that you could have had. Mm -hmm. If you knew somebody, if preachers would have had the guts to, to tell you the truth and, and, and say that this is the finished work of Christ. Here's what's available now. Yes. But he says, then he'll wipe away your tears and say, it's okay. It's come on in. It's all good. So I, I want to be one of those that he walks in and he goes, man, used every bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So scripture, anything in you today that's kind of like, you're going like, oh my God, this is one of those days where you're going like, I, I know there's a God. I speak about him often. I read about him. I'm really kind of fond of him. But this is one of those days where I'm going, really? <laughs> well, interestingly enough, I'm hearing a lot of um, prophetic words about 2014. And uh, something I read the other day was talking about it being um, double seven, 14 being double mm -hmm. seven, double blessing, and time of completion and um, time of fulfillment and fullness of time and that kind of stuff. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people that are ready to see and receive yes. what they've been believing for. And um, today even I read a word that was talking about a spirit of foreboding that would want to come against mm -hmm. us to tell us mm -hmm. that the future is only bad and it's yeah. only, you know, bad things that are ahead and different things like that. But that is not what God has in store for us. Amen. I was reading the other day about that we are not children of wrath. Correct. We are not under the wrath of God. So thank God for that because there are a lot of people that, that are saved that do not know and understand that our life is to be different because we yes. are in God and yes. a good different, not, not bad or that now, oh, you know, I used to think, um, Daryl, maybe you can relate to this, how years ago, you know, the thing was to be afraid that you'd be called to be a missionary to go to Africa. And uh, like that was the worst thing we could imagine. Or, and I've had heard people say this, whatever, um, what is the worst thing you want to do is the thing that God's going to call you to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then uh, the worst thing, I, I would hate being rich. I would hate being <laughs> prosperous. Oh, please, God, don't call me to that, please. <laughs> like, what's the, top, what's the top three? The top big three off the top of my head of what every Christian is going, these are the worst things. These are the worst things 
that you can do in the kingdom. You know, like divorce. That's what writes right up there is one of those, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Denying Jesus Christ, yeah. right? And or or believing outright in prosperity. Yeah. Because yeah. somehow you're demeaning the legacy of Christ that he came just to be a social activist and to work in the soup kitchens and and just to dwell among the sellers and, and help those people. And praise God, he did. But that's not what he was talking about. He came to us. Blessed are the poor. He's talking about the poor in spirit, the poor that you don't know that resurrection life is right here in your life and in your mouth mm -hmm. and in your heart to receive him. And it doesn't just apply to the eternal, which is the free gift, but it also applies to Abraham's blessings. Yes. Right. Yes. Where would we yes. find that? Yes. In the New Testament <clears throat> about Abraham's blessings. That would be Galatians chapter three, right? Uh, is it, yeah, Galatians three, where it says Christ was cursed. Then it goes in the second verse, it goes, it's so that the Gentiles might receive uh, by faith or it might receive the blessings of Abraham mm -hmm. and that we, Paul goes on to talk in verse 14 of Galatians three, that we, he and his brothers, the Jewish believers, the people that were Jewish and believers that we might receive the promise of the spirit. So the Gentiles get the promise of the spirit and Abraham's blessings, which Paul and his brothers were already experiencing. Plus they get what they were promised yes, right. yes, from the father, yes, yes. which was the, the promise of the spirit, the Holy Spirit that was uh, dispatched after Jesus went back to the Father yes. and dispatched the Holy Spirit to come bring these things into our lives. Yes. yes. Well, when you were talking about Christ <laughs> and going to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, verse 9, and it says that Christ became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. So Jesus did. But start, read it correctly. Okay. Because it starts from the premise, he that was rich became poor so that right. we who are in our poverty, poverty. Yes. might be made rich. That's yes. our starting point. Yes. Right? I don't care if you're wealthy. Right. Yes. When you Compared get born again, him, yeah. when this stuff comes in, the sky's the limit. Absolutely. Because Jesus didn't come. You were talking about uh, a social activist and working in soup kitchens. There's not record that Jesus did any of that, but... Whoever Jesus came in contact with, whatever he was doing, he did not leave them the same. Right. And I think too many people um, in Christianity today, we just want to be nice to people. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not die for us to be nice. Mm -hmm. If we read in Luke chapter 4, what he says, what? We're anointed what? To set the captives free. Yes. To heal open the sick. To uh, yeah, open blind to eyes. Heal the brokenhearted. <clears throat> so he, we're not just to come and pat people, oh, it's going to yes. be better. But the, he made a difference in their lives, mm -hmm. brought change to them. They were not the same after they met him. Yeah. But let's go back to the socialist activist, Jesus serving in soup lines and things like that. Jesus fed people. But when he fed people, he took, in one case, what was it, two fish and five loaves of bread? Mm -hmm. and, and he prayed over it. He blessed it. And he passed it out, had the disciples passed it out. Mm -hmm. And it fed five thousand men besides the women and children hungry men and there were still what 12 baskets left, left over, over and they had eaten to the full so he didn't piecemeal stuff he didn't make have just enough to go around it was always more than enough in everything he ever did in healings in serving everything he did and you said it right he fed them yeah we're told now in the churches, we, we focus in on the words that Jesus yeah. said, uh, you go, go feed them. He goes, what do you want us to do? Go buy stuff? And he goes, no, you feed them. But he was telling them that because he was getting ready to equip them. Yes. They didn't feed them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they literally yeah. passed out the bread, but they didn't yeah. make it. They didn't get the money for it. They didn't do anything. They, they stole some take, kids' lunch. They didn't take up the offering. Okay, everybody right. give what you brought so now we can feed everybody. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I think we've tried to make what Jesus did in the supernatural, mm -hmm. then we're trying to do it in the natural, we're trying not to... knowing that Jesus said, come on, I want you to be like me. I want you to supernaturally be able to do these things. That's a social gospel. The social gospel tries to imitate in a physical realm what the supernatural can only do. Yeah, but he said that when he went away, we were going to do things greater mm -hmm. than he had done. And the church has lost this mm -hmm. along the way. And we have not understood we can feed the thousands in a supernatural way. And I'm talking 
bread and mm -hmm. and meat and, and food. I'm not, and as well as the spiritual. I believe that's where the church is coming. Mm -hmm. I believe that's one of the new things we're going to see. I believe we're going to see things that we've never thought possible. Amen. I, I really believe this. Amen. Yeah, because I think if you, if we are doing what in the church, what everybody else can do yes. without God, without God, then yes. we've missed it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So what's the point? We're just saved people doing this? Well, there's no difference in that than people that aren't God. God wants to show up among his people yes. and do stuff that people without him can't do. Mm -hmm. right. And we have settled so far below yeah. what mm -hmm. God wants us to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, if you go feed someone, that's awesome. Yeah. But if you leave them there lying in the gutter spiritually yeah. without the eternal, yes. right. you don't equip them. Yes. In other words, what we've seen in the welfare state, yeah. mm -hmm. we're going to give you money and feed you, mm -hmm. but we have not equipped you to get out of that ditch. That's right. Yes. We have enslaved you. Now there. you're going to be waiting for my soup kitchen every week. Yeah. I haven't given you the tools or the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit living in you to begin to bust forth supernaturally out of where you've been yes. mired your whole life. Is spiritual yes. and the natural. They work together. And he 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 didn't come just to get you to heaven. Yes. Amen. yes. He came to show forth what he said when he was here. He goes, All of these works I do. He goes, The Father does the works through me. So that now you, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So they're consequently with us. Yes. If yes. you are in the Lord yes. Jesus yes. Christ, you're in him, yes. then the works of the Father should flow through you. And they should go, God, that's God working. Yeah. That's God yeah. working. That's not FEMA yeah. showing up. Right. Yeah. And that's not the local soup kitchen. Right. And God bless these people. Yes. We're not against yes. that. Yes. These yes. are passionate, wonderful yes. people. It's not yes. about that. Right. It is about dismissing the great yes. for the good. Yes. Amen. The good is just what we can do. Yeah. Six days in the in the creation. Man, everything that man could ever need or do was done yes. in six days. Yes. Yes. That's all he did. But God said, nope, you're going to need the seventh day, mm -hmm. the blessing, the supernatural, the day of rest. Christ is that rest. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the implementation of that rest. Yes. The seven on your six, on your humanity, yeah. makes the difference. The seven on, the, on Peter passing out the bread was the difference. Mm -hmm. The seven on Peter walking on the water yes. was the difference of his mm -hmm. six because his six couldn't even walk on the water. Right. Yes, right. yes, yes. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But the supernatural we're talking about is a natural, supernatural kind of... Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you're going, how do I have this much left over? Yeah. How did I yes. feed that many people? Yes. How did this happen? How did yes. that get done? And then you go, it had to be God. Yeah. You have a story. I remember you telling us about the spaghetti story. <laughs> yes, we had a group of people coming to our church in Statesville in 62, 3, somewhere in there. Uh, and they told us they were not going to be at our house for dinner and they weren't going to be spending the night with us because they traveled in a large bus and they Gypsies. were self-sufficient okay. self yeah. and mm -hmm. they could take care of themselves. So I had fixed just enough for my husband and me and Debbie and Daryl were just little kids at that time. You all were what? Uh, six, six, and, six, six and six four. Six and eight. Oh, something like that. Anyway. Six, six and three. four. Yeah, mm -hmm. six and four. Okay. And um, so all of a sudden they come up in this bus and they get out and they said, we've come for dinner. And man, I went into panic mode and I thought, what am I going to do? Because I just had a pound of spaghetti if I fix that much for us, for the four of us and the sauce and everything. Of course, back in those days, I cooked my, made my own <laughs> sauce and everything. And I called my friend real quick and I said, oh, you've got to pray. And she thought of just horrible things that had happened because she could tell I was panicking. But anyway, we prayed, we believed God, and that spaghetti kept multiplying and multiplying. I think there were seven of them. And it fed us, our family, and the seven of them. Wow. So God multiplied. People. God multiplied. I've seen it over and over. I've seen God supply. And and the supplies that I've seen through my life isn't anything compared to what we're getting ready to walk into. I agree. I agree. 2014. Yes. The year yes, of abundance. Yes, yes. But, the open door. Yeah. <laughs> the Ephesians 3.20, exceeding abundantly above, above all, all that you can ask. And the think. Amplified says, think, dream, or pray. 
and think those are the, you started out, uh, you talked about a uh, spirit of uh, dark, not dark darkness, but something foreboding. 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 Mm -hmm. That's the battleground. Yes. Because yeah. we just quoted a verse that said what you're able to ask, think, or even imagine. Yeah. And if you're like me and like so many in this day, because of the news and because of yeah. circumstance, you can't even think or imagine you're going like, mm -hmm. I mean, your wildest imagination is if I could just get this yes. debt paid for right here, if I could just get that thing done. And it's, you're not, I mean, you can't go into the supernatural. All you're thinking about is mm -hmm. I just want to stop sinking. If I could just tread water, yes. I would be very happy. That's not the way God intended us yes. to live. Yes. And there's seasons of that. That's what Paul was talking about. Right. Philippians 4, 13. Mm -hmm. uh, I can do all things through Christ, yes. which strengthens yes. me, which means there are seasons and times where it feels like, Oh my gosh, where are you? Yeah. And then you're, you realize, okay, this is where faith is. Yes, yes. But the day's yes, coming yes. when we're in a different season and you're yes. going, wow, this is easy. This will last forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there's been a, a shift somehow through the years, and I don't know when it started coming, of, of it's become all about us. Mm -hmm. And that, like the serving in the soup, soup kitchens or going to hold the hands of people in the hospital, it's been about, well, isn't that good of me? Instead of going... God wants me to go in the hospital and raise people from the dead by the spirit of the living God, raise them up yes. out of a sick bed, or like you were talking about the soup kitchen, feeding people so that they can come out of that and they're not dependent on other people. It's wonderful that people do that, but that God wants to meet them and yes. that he is yes. their source, not other people. Yes. But unless people know, and, and until Christians can stop being poor mouthed about God, then it's hard for people that don't yeah. know God to believe that God would do that for them. Yeah. But it's it's if if he would come, Romans 3.23, when we are sinners, that Christ died for us at our worst. Didn't know him, didn't care. But he loved us. Mm -hmm. And so there was nothing we could do to earn it. So yes. there's nothing that we can do yes. now to please him more. Yes. Except have faith, because the word says, faith without faith, it is That's the pleasure of God. Mm -hmm. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Then how do you please God? You be a son. Oh, so if I'm in Christ and he sees Christ when he's looking yeah. at me, then he's pleased. Yes. There you go. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> this is how you please God is yes. knowing that he's pleased with you because yes. you're in yeah. Christ. Yes. If he's pleased with you, then you know that he hears what you pray yes. and ask for. Yes. And he says, whatsoever things mm -hmm. you ask for in prayer, whatsoever things yeah. I'll do for you. Yeah. So we're just here to encourage you tonight. I don't know if you want to go on or not, but I want to encourage you that it is foreboding out there. Yes. Every time you pick up yes. the news or turn on the televisions or magazines or just listen to people talk or look at your bills, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the problem here, here is this transform the way you think. Yes, yes. Understand that the devil only has this world and he has words mm -hmm. and he has emotions and feelings and circumstance. These five yes. senses, right. the sensual Christian part of us, right. yes. the sensual, that's not sexual. It includes that. But the sensual just means this meaty part, all of these five yes. senses. If it comes in one of these five senses, the enemy can influence those. Yes. Yes. And our job is to keep our eyes on Jesus, right. the shield of faith, Amen. the helmet of salvation, yeah. the breastplate of righteousness, the loins girt yes. about with the truth of the gospel, yes. and the feet shod with the good news. Everywhere you go, God's good. God's Amen. good. He loves you. Yes. He's not mad at you. And yes. like you said earlier, three times I believe I've read uh, in the gospels, we are not appointed to wrath. Praise God. So thanks for being with us. Good news. Good, good news. news. We'll see you next time. <laughs>